knowledge, has the uh, Israeli Prime Minister's office reached out to the Secretary General's office to set up a meeting when he's here next week? To the best of my knowledge, no. And on Lebanon, you call for the, you call for uh, both sides to de-escalate, maximum restraint. Mm -hmm. However, why doesn't the Secretary General specifically call out the country that is doing the opposite of that by uh, attacking another country, Lebanon, uh, and I'm talking about Israel, not only today uh, at escalating attacks in Gaza City killed over a dozen, Rafa killed over a dozen in Rafa today, we see in the West Bank just yesterday, uh, video is emerging of Israeli forces pushing three Palestinians off a rooftop. This is all happening while Israel is attacking Lebanon. Why don't you specifically call out Israel? Look, on on Lebanon, I think we have been uh, very clear. I mean, the situation is clear. There is a exchange of fire between Israeli forces and Hezbollah, right? I mean, it's a fact. Uh, there has been, and this particular phase uh, started soon after uh, October 7th. We want to see both parties walk back and return to the cessation of hostilities. We want to see the full implementation of 1701, which means the return of state authority of Lebanon uh, south of the of, of the Latani rivers. That's where our um, uh, that's where our diplomatic focus is. Uh, we have called out the violence that we have seen on both sides of the blue line uh, repeatedly. As always, um, civilians are paying the ultimate. Uh, price. The, the video that you refer to, uh, which appears to show uh, Israeli soldiers pushing dead bodies off a rooftop, is frankly grotesque and inhumane uh, from what we've seen this morning. We're obviously very concerned about the deteriorating situation uh, in, the, in the occupied West Bank, uh, including the, uh, the latest military, uh, Israeli military uh, operation. Um, it's very important that the, the incident uh, that we saw in video be, uh, uh, be investigated, people being held to account, and that whatever investigation be done is, is transparent. I mean, we're seeing the fighting uh, continue as well in, in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, we need the ceasefire now. We need the hostages uh, to be released. You know, we talk about the risks of, of floods and, 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 and the need for humanitarian aid. We also need to, to remember these hostages have been there for more than 350 days. Um, it is not a matter, we, we've been, I think, very clear in calling out and condemning, um, but what is needed is action from those who actually uh, have their fingers on the trigger um, to actually push forward on a path to peace. Uh, Deji, then Pam, then Benno. Yeah, first, a quick follow-up on uh, Gabor's question. So, does the Secretary General think this uh, latest strike in Beirut is a violation of in, uh, sovereignty and uh, well, it's territory a, it's, integrity? It's a, you know, it, we have seen repeated violation of the national so of the sovereignty, territorial integrity of Lebanon. Okay, so my question: did, uh, Do you aware of this UNIFIL yesterday afternoon of uh, the Chinese camp? There are aerial bombs exploding around the camp, which the shrapnels and the explosive waves just made damages I, to I, the camp. I have not. Our peacekeeping colleagues didn't inform me. They didn't so inform I, I don't, I'll check. I had not, I had not heard. Oh. Uh, but obviously, I think, and I mentioned this yesterday within the context of the Malaysian uh, uh, Malaysian contingent vehicle being uh, being stoned, uh, it is clear, you know, inside, in, entire inside Lebanon by civilians in Lebanon, it is clear that Camps of peacekeepers need to be protected and should never be uh, should never be targeted. But yesterday you didn't really answer my question. What extra uh, precaution uh, plans or or measures have we, they we, we, took? They, they're peacekeepers, right? They're in the military. Um, they they are fulfilling their mandate fully in extremely challenging circumstances. Uh, the fact that we've had shrapnel in our camps, the fact that some of our vehicles are sometimes targeted or stoned doesn't mean it's stopping. These, these, these amazing peacekeepers have a mission and they're fulfilling that mission. 
The fulfillment of the mandate of 1701 also includes work by the parties over which we can call out to do their job over which we have no control. Uh, Pam, then Benno. Steph, as usual on uh, UNGA week, uh, the world sort of expects all these heads of state to come and come up with some solutions, peace day, etc. Um, what, are there any plans on Middle East, Ukraine, Sudan, with all these leaders coming and speaking with the SG? Uh, I mean, there, there'll be a number of, uh, as you know, there are a number of side uh, side events. Is one on uh, on Sudan and, and others, uh, which obviously we hope that member states use the opportunity to be here uh, to discuss these things in person. Uh, the General Assembly is also uh, a unique uh, a unique way for. Uh, leaders to have more discreet bilateral meetings away from the glares of the of the press lights. We hope all of the, all of this will be taken uh, advantage of, um, and we very much hope um, that member states will agree in the next in the coming hours uh, on a way forward uh, for the summer of the future and show ambition and show uh, show courage and do whatever they can to get these uh, documents over uh, the finish line. And, and just uh, in terms of the SG, the Secretary General meeting with different groups to see if he could come well, up. Well, I mean, You'll he will, you know, he, he has, uh, he has, as you always, as you well know, a large number of bilaterals. He will discuss the top issues on, you know, obviously on, 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 in no particular order, on, right. on Ukraine and in Gaza, Lebanon, uh, Sudan, climate, depending on who he's meeting, trying to push the ball forward. And you'll let us know if there are any breakthroughs. <laughs> Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, okay. Um, about the call with the Venezuelan uh, uh, president, um, did they give you any uh, indication why they wanted a, a telephone call with SG? To talk? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, did the SG in his uh, yes. phone call also um, raise concerns about election uh, integrity in Venezuela? Because I think that was not part of your readout. Well, I think what, what was part of the, of, of the readout is that the Secretary General raised his concerns about some of the post-election violence we'd seen the human rights issues, and the president also spoke very, uh, I think, clearly and forthrightly about the way he sees the situation. Okay, and about the summit of the future, it's not even 48 hours till countries are supposed to adopt the um, pact for the future. Um, yesterday, silence was broken again by a number of countries, and a few days ago, you were very sure uh, when I asked you that there will be agreement on Sunday. Are you still that sure? Hope springs eternal. Tony. Shukran, Steph. Uh, uh, back to Lebanon, follow-up question. Uh, today, this afternoon, the Security Council will be hearing from Rosemary Di Carlo a briefing. Why not from the Special Coordinator for Lebanon? Uh, I mean, the Special Coordinator for Lebanon works under Ms. Di Carlo, so she represents the um, uh, she represents the whole political affairs department which oversees the special coordinator for Lebanon the special coordinator for Middle East peace process so it's a, it's a broader it's a broader view okay but you mentioned also um, during her calls for the escalations mm -hmm. she repeated the calls for the escalation yeah. to her interlocutors can you specify who is she engaging with Look, at she, this time? she engages with Israeli authorities she engages with the Lebanese uh, government. She also speaks to Hezbollah. She speaks to uh, a lot of different parties in Lebanon. She speaks to who, you know, the, the, our ability and our leverage is to be able to speak to whoever has an impact on the situation and to ensure that the same messages are passed. Miriam, and then. Thank you, Steph. Um, speaking of whoever um, has an impact. Has the Secretary General or uh, Rosemary De Carlo had a talk with the Iranian uh, officials um, either here in New York or inside the country, Iran? Uh, Regarding Le Lebanon, of course. Um, I don't have any information to share with you on that at this point. Uh, Sinan. 
Thank you, Steph. I have a question about Syria. I mean, I've been reading the Mr. Gate Patterson's reports almost every month, and I see there is a frustration because what he says is it's not getting anywhere, these ne negotiations. And he also said this morning he's going to meet with some uh, ministers next week in New York mm -hmm. City, I guess, the Syrian actors. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if Secretary General also frustrated because of the situation, also if there is any hope. I, I think the the... Mr. Pedersen represents the Secretary General. I think his frustration uh, is also a reflection of the Secretary General's own frustration on the lack of progress on the Syrian political track. And any hope for next week, next week meetings? Hope springs eternal. Last one. <laughs> Last one. Uh, also, he said this morning, um, existing piecemeal diplomacy is plainly struggling to make progress even on a small measures. Yeah. So basically, he's calling on, on actors to do a new comprehensive solution for Syria, right? He's and also, like, we know the position of the countries and groups. Yeah. So how possible is that? Like? I mean, listen, we, um, the, it, the fact that we continue to go at it in, in, in face of such frustration, in face of a deteriorating regional situation, let's be honest, is a sign of our determination not to abandon not only the mandate that was given, but frankly, the, the hopes and aspirations of the Syrian people and the people all over the region to return to a modicum of peace and of normal life and to have a voice in their own future. Uh, Abdel Hamid and then Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. I follow up on some of the questions of my colleague, Gabriel. Today, uh, Israeli airstrikes killed 34 Palestinians in Rafah. And nine people were killed in uh, Kabatia. Three of them were thrown from the roof of the buildings. And yet we haven't seen a separate in statement from I, I, Iceland I, or... But I, I answered the... I, I expressed the position of the Secretary General from this podium. On the... Th uh, what about, uh, about the 34 uh, Palestinians killed we, in Rafah today? We, we keep deploring the killings of civilians. We keep deploring the continued uh, fighting. This is just an ongoing and, and constant message from us and something that we pass both publicly and privately. Your next question. On Lebanon. Yeah, I mean, the attacks the, on the pagers and the walkie-talkie, it could have, have killed, it could have killed 5,000 Lebanese. If every pager was exploded, killed the carrier, as Hassan Nasrallah said in his statement, it could have killed 5,000 Lebanese, children, women, what, what, nurses. What, what is the question? How could that uh, major, major attack passes without condemnation? I cannot still understand that. We have, I mean, listen, I, what, what you will analyze and write what you want. I think I've, I've no, I, I, I understand, but I, I think I've, you know, we, we're, we go over the same, uh, the <coughs> same road. I've spoken out on Lebanon. I've used the words that I've, that I've used. I think uh, using the word restraint, calling restraint, the happiest party of the, to this statement will be Israel. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to hear question marks. Yes, uh, Stefano. Questions. One is about UNIFIL in Lebanon. Um, you explained this before. Basically, that there are plans to, uh, in case if if the the mission has to evacuate, if you have, they have to leave all of a sudden. But um, I have a question. If one, I don't or recall the detailing such plans, but maybe maybe somebody did. But go ahead. What's the question? Uh, the question is uh, if. Uh, you know, this is a multinational forces. If one of the forces decide, the government of the forces decide that it's the time to leave, how is how does that happen? I mean, do they have to ask permission first to the UN? UN has to. Well, I mean, we've it. seen it. Listen, first of all, we don't rather not think about that. Uh, but obviously, there are our colleagues are always planning. Uh, it is the prerogative of any member state who gives a unit or troops to a mission to remove them. I mean, they, it's, they can't, they're not, no one is going to hold national soldiers against their will or against their government's will. What we do very much hope is that 
all of the member states who've contributed to the mission in Lebanon, and we thank them for it because this is a very difficult mission. This is a very challenging mission. This is a very risky mission. We thank them for continuing to support UNIFIL, and we hope they will do so um, as we move forward. Another question, uh, if the Secretary General is worried about those, about these um, pagers that, and walkie-talkie, but especially the pagers that they exploded, uh, it seems that they were, um, this operation started many years ago. So is, there is a possibility that people that had those pagers, for example, traveling in uh, uh, civil airplane, so it, it where, could where, go. Where does, where does the so the show? question is, there is a technology here in place that can, that instead of the hand of the state, let's say go in the hand of terrorists and everything, could have, uh, could, could become a, a really, really I dangerous Stefano, situation. The, the, secretary, so the st secretary General, I think, answered that question very clearly when he expressed his concern at the militarization of civilian technology.